Welcome back to Hobby Rama West and celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. We have an episode today that's going to knock your socks off. Before we get into it, I want to say a special shout out to Max's Glue Troopers of Max's Models, the best modeling channel on YouTube. Go check it out. But we're going to talk about the gift sets of the 1950s. Raise your hand if you ever had one, that special gift for a birthday or Christmas uh, from your favorite aunt or mom and dad. Uh, I actually wound up with a strategic bomber's gift set as a birthday gift, my eighth birthday gift from my Cub Scout troop in Bellport, Long Island, New York, uh, and built the whole thing in one weekend, but that's another story. Uh, but the joy of a gift set is as good as it would have been to have a 89 cent fighter of the uh, you know, model of the F-105. You could have the entire Century Series, all five airplanes, in one big kit. Uh, these were really special models, and we're going to be uh, featuring a number of them in the episodes to come. Uh, we'd like to have suggestions and see what you feel we should uh, talk about. Uh, please feel free to leave comments below. But we're going to be looking inside the boxes. The, the presentation of these models was, was just unheard of in those days. Uh, they came with paint. They came with glue. There were uh, cardboard inserts inside the boxes with different colors. Uh, it was just a festival of modeling. And I am so excited to be bringing some of these incredible kits to you on Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machette. An interesting thing about the gift sets is that they were in the early 50s. This is before Jack Lenwood became Ravel's premier cover artist. The artist on these uh, box tops was Dick Kashadi. Kashadi was uh, a Hungarian-born uh, pilot who flew in World War II and uh, was a very, very talented, very capable artist, but he served as Ravel's first art director, as well as illustrating these beautiful covers. Uh, behind me, I have two Kashadi originals, the Yak-25 flashlight and the Convair F-106 Delta Dart. Uh, it's really spectacular to see the original art. It's so vibrant. And I have, must say, in terms of uh, uh, imagery reproduction at that time, Ravel did a beautiful job in capturing the luminous quality and the beautiful colors of the artwork that you see here. But on the cover art, uh, an interesting series of ways of bringing these images to you, the model buyer. Uh, here you've got a grouping with uh, uh, Tommy or Billy uh, at home ready to build these models and holding his F-102. Uh, here you've got a skyscape with the classic yellow and green sky. I've talked in other episodes about how Ravel employed yellow and odd combinations of colors to catch your eye. Uh, here you've got a dramatic sunset scene with the airplanes kind of blasting out of uh, the air. And then this is a, an interesting compartmentalization, if I can use that word, uh, of each model in its own little area in this uh, oval. Uh, all different ways of getting the uh, subject to you, but uh, all in their own way, very, very effective at uh, depicting what's inside those beautiful boxes. I'd like to point out how effectively Dick Kishati used the models in uh, depicting the illustrations on these covers. This was a family of supersonic airplanes that had never been uh, done before, but from the F-100 to the uh, F-105, Ravel captured those aircraft in a gift set called the Hobby Kit Century Series Fighters. Notice also they show the revolving stand on the, uh, on the 101 to uh, show you that the stand is inside each one of those uh, kits. Another really cool Ravel gift set was Strategic Bombers. As I mentioned, I built this uh, as a Cub Scout, eight years old, back in uh, Long Island, in one weekend, I might add. Ugh. But um, the, the message here was that we were transitioning from the World War II bomber, the Boeing B-29, into the jet age. We had the B-36, uh, the B-47. Test pilot Tex Johnson regarded the B-47 as one of, if not the most significant jet airplane of that era because it was uh, swept wings, potted engines. It was the progenitor of every jet airliner flying today, right there. And of course the uh, mammoth uh, eight engine B-52 still flying today. As I mentioned in another video recently, this is an airplane that's going to be operational for probably close to 100 years. Here we have the Strategic Air Command Bombers gift set. The box that we see here is supposed to be the second edition, code number H209 for $3.95. When you think of the Strategic Air Command, uh, what comes to mind usually is Jimmy Stewart flying the B-36, transitioning to the B-47. The B-52 was introduced in 1955. So what is a B-29 doing in a Strategic Air Command gift set? Well, this is a, an interesting twist, and it's where uh, accuracy and model marketing intersect. The B-29 was called the Super Fortress, 
the later model, the B50, powered by uh, Pratt & Whitney R4360 engines with the taller tail, was the it was also called the Super Fortress, and that literally was a strategic air command bomber, whereas the B-29 served in World War II. So that's the reason the 29 is included. As I say, a little bit of a twist on accuracy, but I think it deserves to be in the, uh, in the fleet. Let's open up the box and see what's inside. Now you'll notice that uh, for an early Revell kit, normally these kits were uh, bagged in cellophane, or at least the small parts were taken off the trees and bagged in cellophane. And here we have the complete kit bagged in, uh, in a poly bag, which uh, came later. And the reason is that this is the second iteration. The first uh, release in 1954 uh, was the traditional um, Revell kits with the smaller plastic parts in the, cell in the uh, cellophane bag. This is the entire box inside the, uh, the, the master box, each one in a poly bag. Um, and again, the 29, the 36, the 47. But this also begs the question, like the Century Series, well, wait a minute, if all those airplanes are different sizes, what scale are each of one of these kits? Funny you should ask. The B-29 is 1 one thirty-fifth. The B-36 is 1 one eighty-fourth. The B-47 is 1 one eighty-fifth. And the B-52, the largest of the airplanes, the scale is 1 one seventy-five. An interesting collection, but uh, probably the only way you would ever get the entire Strategic Air Command fleet in one beautiful package. One of the coolest things in the Air Force in the 1950s was the Century Series Fighters. The Century Series Fighters gift set is code number G290 and sold for the princely sum of $4.98. The fighters from Ravel were 89 cent kits individually. I have here the Republic F-105. But in the gift set, you have the North American F-100, uh, the Convair F-102, the McDonnell F-101, the 105 as mentioned, and the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter. And these were groundbreaking airplanes at the time. We look at these now as all vintage relics. They're all in museums. But uh, at the time, to have a, an operational airplane going Mach 1 and the 104 first time to Mach 2 uh, in, a, in a jet airplane when uh, those speed records were set by rockets just a few years before was really uh, just a, a revolutionary and, and uh, attention-getting uh, event. Let's take a look inside this magnificent box and see all five Century Series airplanes. Wow, that's quite an arrangement. They're in order, and uh, you notice that the Ravel Type S cement, a paintbrush, and three colors are there. This is interesting, too, in terms of packaging because you've got uh, what would be the equivalent of the bottoms of the top and bottom mated boxes for individual kits uh, with the exception of the F-101 which is in a well left between the two boxed F-100 and F-102 kits. Um, the uh, direction sheet and decals are up on top as you see here. Uh, that's not the way they originally came but it's a, a nice way of displaying uh, the models that are here. Now what's interesting is you'll notice the boxes are the same size but the airplanes were not. So that means that you've got different scales for each and every one of the five Century Series jets, and that's where the term box scale comes from. For those who might uh, wonder, the F-100 is 170th scale, the F-101 is 175th, the F-102 is 177th, the F-104, which was, which was the smallest in, in actual size, was 164th scale, and the F-105, which was the largest, is 175th scale. So that's the concept of uh, having different size models in the same size box. Why were the boxes the same? To fit on the shelf of your hobby shop. Now let's take a look at the Sky Squadron gift set. Code number G226. It sold for $4.95 in 1955. Of all the gift sets uh, Ravel produced, this is really one of the most interesting because it has such a wide variety of subject matter. You had an amazing array of different aircraft, uh, some from World War II, the Mitchell B-25 uh, from North American, the consolidated B-24 Liberator. Then you had Ravel's only helicopter kit at the time, the Sikorsky S-55. Uh, a bit of an oddity, it's in Army colors with Air Force markings, but that was so typical of the model companies at that time, they would mix and match uh, factual information like that. Uh, then you had the Republic F-84F Thunderstreak and a rocket airplane, the Douglas D-558-2, 
uh, which at that time had just become the first airplane to fly twice the speed of sound in 1953. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Well, look at all the different colors. This is interesting. The B-24 is molded in a lighter shade of olive drab. There were several different shades of olive drab in these kits, depending on the uh, pellet of color that was injected into the injection mold as the kit was being uh, pressed. So the B-24 has a little more of a pea soup green, uh, whereas the B-25 is a darker uh, olive drab, almost a, a dark uh, greenish brown, uh, as is the Sikorsky helicopter. The Douglas uh, Skyrocket is in beautiful pure white, and the uh, Republic F-84 Thunderstreak is in silver. You'll notice that uh, this vintage of kit is the cellophane wrap rather than the poly, and there are two uh, box bottoms as it were, uh, stapled into place with the Sikorsky helicopter and the Republic F-84, whereas the other parts are laying in a uh, bin that has been created in the open space between the stapled boxes. Unlike the Century Series uh, gift set, which had uh, paint and glue and a brush, the Sky Squadron has only the Ravel S-type cement, assuming that you could build all five models with one cement tube. Of glue. As with the previous gift sets that we've looked at in this series, these models are uh, the same size inside the box, even though that the aircraft types were all different sizes. And this brings up the issue of box scale. So let's take a look at the Sky Squadron. The F-84 Thunderstreak is in 154th, as is the Douglas Skyrocket. The B-24, the largest of the aircraft in this set, is 192nd scale. The B-25 is 164th, and the S-55 helicopter is 149th. The last of our gift sets in today's episode is the CBS Air Power, and it says on the box, as inspired by CBS Television's Air Power. For those of you who remember, Walter Cronkite was the narrator, and his voice over the imagery of these new jets uh, was a voice of authority, uh, and uh, it was just a, a really perfect marriage of imagery and, uh, and narration. So that was a nice uh, cross-marketing tie-in. The kit number was G240. It sold for $4.95. This particular uh, specimen has a beautiful cover. It was never taped in a hobby shop. And uh, I want to mention just a bit about the box art. Uh, it's an unusual, almost photographic sky with the airplanes roaring down from, uh, from the stratosphere. And uh, according to various sources, it says the box art is by Dick Cushati. Uh, but I look at some of the highlights and some of the rendering, and it looks very much like Jack Lenwood. And this brings up an interesting point. Lenwood was hired into Ravel in 1956, his first cover being the Lockheed C-130 Hercules. And he had mentioned to me a number of times that uh, Dick Cushati had uh, asked him to paint a certain way, and actually the two artists collaborated on a number of covers with uh, Cushati putting in highlights on some of Jack's original renderings. And so there's a blending of these looks, and I, I just have a feeling this cover may represent that era where both artists were working together uh, to create the imagery that you see here. Let's open up the box and see this beautiful kit. And I want to talk about a very, uh, I think, important point in collectability. Take a look at these five bays of models. They're not in the original poly bag. They're arranged uh, the, the boxes, the two box segments are not stapled to the outer box, and so the parts are in a bit of disarray. Does that take away from the value of this as a collectible model kit? And in my book, much like classic cars uh, and vintage musical instruments, um, the collectability is all about the history. Uh, this is a, a product that was uh, first released in 1956, for gosh sakes. And think of anything from that era, whether it's a kitchen appliance or a 56... Uh, uh, porthole Thunderbird, uh, they're going to be worn, they're going to be used, they're going to be loved and enjoyed. That's what modeling is all about. Finally, I want to talk about the box scale once again. The boxes are the same size, but the airplanes weren't. The B-57 is 1181, the F-89 is 180, the F-100 170, the 101 175th, and the 102 177th. So as you can see, the airplanes were relatively close in size, and the scales reflect that. This wraps up our presentation on Ravel Aviation gift sets. Now let's take a look at other gift sets we're planning to bring to you 
from other companies like this beautiful monogram Air Force Patrol in a vertically oriented box, a TWA airliner set with a 1930s DC-3 and 1950s Super G Constellation, two great kits from Comet, the Squadron of Six with Air Force and Navy jet fighters, and a six-pack with three general aviation airplanes and three Air Force jet bombers. We have a neat gift set from Lindbergh, four World War II fighters, and finally, Hobby Time's flight portrait gift set. We have even more great sets from Ravel to show you, including this very first one ever, their Prius three jet fighters, the Dawn Patrol, Airborne Marines, and Strategic Air Command featuring the KC-135 and B-58 Hustler. But our series wouldn't be complete without gift sets of ships, including NBC's Victory at Sea, ABC Television's Navy Log, the Admiral's Fleet, and Merchant Fleet. But wait, there's more! A gift set with everything, a ship, a plane, and even a car. It's called Let's Take a Trip. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat, and until next time, take care. Special thanks to jamesplanes.com for the use of these incredibly stunning gift sets.